Snakes have different expected behaviors from species to species. You could expect a bull snake to hiss a lot, but probably not bite you. A Burmese python will hang out with you calmly. A garter snake will probably musk and make you smell terrible. And a mamba will quickly end your life. But within one species of snake, let's take, I don't know, ball pythons, for example. Are there different personalities? And if so, does that affect how we interact with them? Or do we just treat them all the same? Welcome to The Green Room. I'm Bob Bledsoe. I'm just going to answer the question right now. Yes, there are different personalities within one species of snake. We're going to take a look at a handful of my ball pythons and talk about how my interactions with them will change based on their different behaviors and personalities. I have Kata with me here because of all my snakes, she is the most nervous of human interactions and she probably has the most quirks and considerations. Yeah, she's like a ghost snake that haunts your dreams. No, she's not. My brother Kent, everyone. Remember last week when you were all, oh, it's not a poltergeist, Kent. Poltergeist. That is not an accurate impression of me. I sent a poll out to the horde of keepers asking them how many snakes they have, because is it common to have more than one snake and therefore have to deal with more than one snake personality? Here are the results. I guess I should get my phone. Look at that, Kata. I found my phone and my coffee. Here were the categories. Zero snakes, I just really like the channel. That got 9%. One snake that I know of, 29%, here was the biggest category. Two to five snakes, but don't think there won't be more. That got 41%. Six to 10, and my neighbors are calling my house the snake pit. Here's my category. 11 to 25, and you can pry them from my cold dead hands. That's the one that I personally belong to. Uh, that got 6%. The last one got 6% also. I don't know if I said that. And the final one also gets 6%, and that is... I have somewhere between 26 and 700, but don't make me get up and count. So yeah, I'd say that it's pretty common to have more than one snake and deal with different personalities. That's good to know because uh, that means that this video might be relevant. So the deal with Kata is that she is nervous of human interactions. Whenever I open her tub, she is completely still, usually in strike position, but it's not that she's planning to strike. She never has. Uh, it, it's just kind of how she sits in her kind of very still, nervous position. Imagine the snow-white python camouflaged perfectly in the wintry tundra of the Himalayan mountains, easily evading predators by staying perfectly still like a motionless snow ninja. If she lived anywhere else, she'd be screwed. Kata seems to enjoy coming out on her own and exploring the house, but she gets nervous if she sees movement or if I reach for her. Even if I do it sort of carefully, she gets, she gets pretty tense. She will come to me though, and uh, it's not because she wants to hang out with me, she's just, I'm just in her way of where she's trying to go, but she has no problem coming up to me. She'll tongue flick on my ankle or my foot or something and then crawl right over it to get to where she wants to go which I think is interesting. She doesn't tend to settle down much when she's out. She likes to explore around, but I don't know if that's, I mean, I say she likes to explore around, but that might not be the case. It might be that she is just looking for the best spot to settle and she's just not comfortable yet with, with the whole situation. She'll stay under the couch. She'll kind of go behind the couch and behind, the, behind some of the different furniture that's along one wall where she's hiding and exploring at the same time and just kind of going back and forth. Eventually she'll settle, but it takes her a while. So the reason Kata is like this is she may have crawled out of the egg like this. That, that happens with some snakes, but she also was raised at a breeding facility where they didn't handle her very much, which is okay. A snake is not a dog. They don't need human interaction. But because I like to, I'm gonna, uh, because I like to interact with my snakes, I try to work with her carefully. So that means that I'll do occasional handling sessions like this. The last one she had was about a week or so ago. And uh, and then the other time it's, it's just letting her come out and see the room and also just opening the tub and sitting next to her tub where she can see me for just a few minutes and then I close it without, without touching her, without messing with her. And I can tell that she's gotten a little bit more comfortable. So right now she is She's kind of in explore mode a little bit. She's exploring this back right behind me. But she also, if I if I move her, which I'm about to, uh, she'll she'll kind of tense up. She she doesn't she just doesn't like being messed with. She's she's kind of happy right here. She's not she's not super happy right here, but <laughs> because of the situation, this is about the happiest spot for her. But I'm gonna put her back, or actually I'm not even gonna put her back. I'm just gonna put her down, so she can wander. 
uh, and we'll talk about the other snakes. She definitely will be happier on the floor. I was hoping that Kata was gonna give me eggs this season, and if you saw my breeding updates video, I was hoping that she had ovulated and was getting ready to lay, but her, her behavior just isn't consistent with that, so I don't think she's gonna give me eggs. I think she's, she's reabsorbing. She's just interested in moving around a lot more than nesting right now. Next snake on the list is Lucille. Lucille is kind of the opposite of Kata in that she is completely fine to be handled. She hardly ever shows any signs of stress at all, and doesn't really have any special considerations other than the standard ball python stuff. But uh, she, you know, when she's in her enclosure, she's in a hide. She has two hides and she uses them. It used to be that she would explore all over the house and now she still does that, but it's kind of half and half. She'll explore a bit and then settle in eventually. Hey, get out of my pocket. And she's in my pocket. There we go. But she's just totally comfortable. She's one of the first snakes that I would hand to a young child and doesn't seem phased by other snakes. She won't start peeing and marking her territory, which I have some other snakes that do that. Uh, so let's let her roam. She can join Kata. If you're buying a hatchling ball python, how do you know what their personality is going to be? You know, if it's an older snake like this, you can just ask the seller what they're like. But if it's a hatchling, first of all, if you're buying from a big breeder, they're just going to be like, um, it sits in its tub and slithers sometimes. But also, the, you know, it's a hatchling, so it hasn't had time to develop a personality. A lot of times snakes go through personality changes as they grow. So it's kind of luck of the draw in that case. They're gonna come out of the egg a certain way and their interactions are gonna be, uh, as, I mean, the, their personality is gonna be a certain way based on the interactions that they've had in the past. Kata is the way she is, nervous, because she didn't have much interactions with humans her first few years of her life. So when the big bearded monkey comes and opens her tub every morning, that makes her scared. This is Ron, and he also spent the first couple years of his life at a larger breeding facility that, that probably wasn't handling him very often. So when I brought him in, he was very much like Kata in that he was nervous and, and scared of human interaction. And he still, I mean, he hides almost all the time. He's quite the hider, and when I do bring him out, he's nervous for the first five seconds, and then as soon as I, I have him out, he relaxes. I can feel his body relax, and he seems uh, content with just exploring around. So he's gotten better over time, but he's also not a snake that I work with a ton because he, he does like to hide, and when I have a snake that spends most of their time in their hide, I let them do that. The snakes that seem to be at the front of their tub trying to explore are the ones that I bring out more often. So I deal with these snakes differently based on how they're acting in their environment. If, they're, if they seem content hiding, I kind of tend to let them do that. But I do like to bring Ron out occasionally just to work with him a bit. You guys, I'm very proud of Ronaldo here because he just took a meal this week. He hasn't done that in a few months because he's been breeding and he's, he's a really great breeder, but he doesn't like to eat during breeding season. So Congratulations to this little man for taking a meal this week. All right, let's put you back. You wanna go back in your hide? I bet you do. Delilah, I got her as a hatchling and she is very well socialized and used to being handled. She comes out and explores on her own now uh, and tends to, tends to like to explore quite a bit. If I put her in a new territory though, she'll try to hide right away and she, if she hides her head, that's all she feels like she needs to hide. She doesn't, she doesn't like crawl all the way into things to hide. She'll just sort of duck her head into something. And a new territory, by the way, uh, keep in mind is anytime, like if I bring her, she doesn't ever go into my bedroom on the bed. So if I brought her onto the bed, that's a new territory for her. She would try to hide. It's usually when I bring her outside and put her on something that's new to her that she's, that she's, she'll try to hide her head. And that's how I know that she's feeling a little bit uncomfortable. And all I do at that point, and this is with any of my snakes that are really comfortable with me and with my hands, is I'll just show them a hand. I'm not gonna shove it right in their face, but but a little bit, here, I'll give you an example. I'll go about, about like this, to where she can tell that my hand is there, and then she'll go towards it and tongue flick it a little bit. And that's, you know, it's not that she's, it's not that she loves me as a person. It's that my hand is something that she knows and there's a certain comfort level with it. I could do it also with this piece of wood right here. This is something that some of my snakes know pretty well, the, the ones that crawl around on the countertop a lot, they know this piece of wood. So because they know this, I could stick this kind of close to their face, they would tongue fleck it and, and go, oh, that's something I'm comfortable with and feel a little bit better and start to relax. So now Delilah is gonna join the other girls on the floor. And go see if you can find your neighbors. 
I bet you won't, I bet you won't care about your neighbors. There you go. Go have an adventure. One consideration when she is cruising around is she does she does she's more adventurous than some of the others. She won't immediately go under furniture and stuff like that. She'll cruise all around. So I have to be a little bit more aware when she's out and about where I'm walking and also checking on her a little bit more to make sure that she's not getting herself into trouble. But right now she's going right under the couch. That's great. Before we review the last two snakes on the list, let's find out what's happening in Ken's corner. Welcome to Ken's corner, the only corner of the house that everybody runs to to find me, Kent. Let's say that you're talking to your friend about the personalities of serial killers because your friend works at the serial killer prison. And you go, oh, okay, what about Steve, the South Side Strangler? And he's all, oh, him, well, he's a murderer. And you go, oh, all right, well, what about Chainsaw Chuck, the Scourge of Utah? And he's like, oh, that guy, he kills people too. You see, you don't have to say, oh, he enjoys karaoke and he's always quick with a pun. Because it doesn't matter if they murder people. So what are we even talking about with these snakes in here? Thank you for watching Kent's Corner, the only show that you always watch 24-7. Well, Kent, these snakes don't murder people. So, agree to disagree. There's been a lot of speculation all over the internet, the news networks, as to this secret society known as the Horde of Keepers. How do people get in? Who, who are the members of it? It's a secret society, you guys. So all I can tell you is that you can get in by going to patreon.com slash greenroompythons. And this is a complete list of the members of the Horde of Keepers. Please don't share these names with anyone. It's a secret society. Especially don't share the names with anyone that's asking you while wearing a, you know, fancy suit with like aviator sunglasses. That's not the person to share this information with. I did a live stream with the Horde of Keepers this week and that went well. Hey, look at that. Black Box Cages is on the board. I drew this. I drew their logo, you guys. Look at that. Anyway, the live stream went well, and Echo bit me on camera. Oh man, really? Really? That was super rude. Don't handle a retake that's completely in food mode. Thanks so much to the Horde of Keepers over on Patreon. Let's get back to it. On to what some people would argue is possibly the cutest of all my snakes. This is Bear. Old Bearsley here is a great example of a point that I want to make, and that is that if your snake is a certain personality one day, they may not be that personality the next, and you just kind of have to pay attention to their behavior. When Bear was in his hatchling tub, he was often at the front, and I would open it, he'd come right out onto my hand, he never showed any fear, he did great as far as his socialization. When I moved him to a larger tub, because he outgrew his smaller one, he started to become a little bit more fearful. He still ate, like that was not a problem, he's never missed a meal. But he just was a little bit more nervous. Anytime I would open the tub, he'd, he'd sort of curl up and get real tense. And that's not the behavior that I was seeing from him before. So with Bear, the way I, the way I deal with him is I give him a lot more clutter in his tub. And that seems to help. He's, he's not as nervous when I open it up. He's always hiding either in one of his hides or in a whiskey sleeve if I leave a whiskey sleeve in there or something like that. I think it helps him feel a little bit more comfortable when I go in to open that tub. But he's definitely has some special considerations because he is not as confident as he was before. So Bear's almost a year old at this point and I expect him to grow out of this phase and probably become more confident. You know, right now, he, he always eats. That's never a problem. He's, you know, it's not like he's a stressed out snake. It's just the behavior that he exhibits when I open his tub and go in to, to pick him up is different and it's a little bit more, he's he's clearly a little bit more nervous. So I, I work with him a little bit differently and having lots of clutter in his enclosure really, really helped him out, I think. Let's grab my other yearling pied boy because I've got a couple of uh, considerations with Captain Farrell. He's, he's one that, I've mentioned this in videos before, when I first got him from Ozzy Boyd's, he was really fearful did not you know i have tubs that are that are see-through and oz does not so when he saw any movement in front of his tub he'd be striking 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 but he calmed down really quickly with some regular socialization and now he's really comfortable being handled special considerations though for captain farrell are that 
he will mark his territory when he's around other snakes. So I can't put him in the playpen with my other yearling snakes when they're all cruising around because he'll just start peeing everywhere. And I don't want to have to clean that up. So he goes in the playpen by himself because of that behavior. I have a couple snakes that are like that, that, that do that. Um, most of them don't, but a few will. So he's clearly not comfortable around other snakes, although that's not true. The snakes that aren't comfortable around other snakes will hide immediately, and he doesn't. He explores around, but while marking his territory. So I think he just wants to do that. Um, so that's a special consideration for him. Other than that, he's happy to be handled by anybody and uh, doesn't ever really show signs of stress, except for when he was a hatchling, those first just few weeks. Like after a few weeks, he calmed right down. So socialization doesn't take months or years with, with snakes. Sometimes it does. I mean, I'm talking about ball python specifically. Sometimes it does, but I've found more often than not, it's a pretty quick thing when they're young. When, you know, when they're young. Kata is is taking a while and she's going to take quite a bit longer because she spent years of her life, you know, without much human interaction. But when they're young, when they're little, you can socialize them pretty quick. And Captain Farrell is a great example of that. So not all snakes are the same, and you will have much more success, I think, as a keeper if you can alter your interactions with your snakes based on their current behaviors and tendencies. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Look at this boy. Live stream next week, you guys. Live stream. <laughs>